Now, lupus vulgaris is not lupus erythromatosis. If you know that, that's we will give you the seed, doctor. Lupus vulgaris is TB, and that too will give a lot of clues. Case shading granulomas are found, scarring is there, apple jelly nodules are there. Just to tell that it is not lupus erythromatosis, we will give you seat. Oro oculo genital syndrome basically is caused by what? Always in biochemistry, one question will come on vitamins. So, riboflavin vitamin B2 is the one which is classically associated with oral ocular genital syndrome where angular cheilitis, crotal dermatitis are the components of the oral genital involvement of the vitamin B2 is what need to be remembered. Now, how do you treat acne? We basically use tajuretin, isotretinoin, both of these things we all know. But who is this adapalene? Fundamentally, adapalene is the third generation topical retinoid, which is used in the mild to moderate acne. So, that is the reason we do not use methotrexate. Actually, examiner framed wonderful questions, but very easy options. I mean, in the sense, uh, even if you know adapalene, if you do not know what is adapalene, you can guess that it is not methotrexate definitely. Unless you have that uh, planetary uh, nasib where uh, you are tempted to answer uh, adapalene because you did not know about it. So, that is a helpless state, nothing to worry. Now comes the chancroid. There is one statement if untreated, bubo ruptures and forms multiple sinuses. Examiner was thinking how to frame an option. Multiple sinuses, now what is the opposite word to multiple sinuses? Single sinus. So, you put single sinus and then frame uh, that extra option, otherwise no big deal. So, even if you do not know chancroid form sinuses, I mean, if, even if you are not sure whether chancroid form sinuses or not, that single sinus is inviting you, I am no more single. It is saying, so, it is no more single actually, bubo ruptures and forms multiple sinuses. That is what need to be appreciated. Merciful anosmia, one of the very traditional question, atrophic rhinitis, ozina, where they are unaware of their own smell due to the marked amount of anosmia, is called merciful anosmia. From where does acoustic neuroma arise? Anybody answered inferior vestibular nerve? Inferior. But uh, I spoke to a couple of otolaryngologists and one neurosurgeon. Of course, they are all very traditional, um, I mean, um, in the sense that all the guys are saying it is uh, superior vestibular nerve, though some rare references are there that it arises according to the new concept from inferior, but I do not believe that. I still buy the theory that it comes from the superior vestibular nerve most commonly. Let us check what is there in the evening key. For ethmoidal polyposis, you all know it is a functional endoscopic uh, sinus surgery. Generally, one question comes on FES. Now, with regard to the unsafe CSOM, what is unsafe CSOM, doctor? CSOM with cholesteatoma is basically called as unsafe. So, modified radical mastoidectomy is considered to be the procedure of choice in order to completely clean out the modifier, uh, the unsafe CSOM. Frisk massless is basically the clavisial rhinoscleromata, which lead to the development of the rhinoscleroma is very well known. No fool will do tracheostomy for a asthma, unless you are planning uh, to do DM pulmonology after MSCNT. That is the reason they do not give eligibility for you to do DM pulmonology after MSCNT because they may think that you, you are good at emergency tracheostomy, you may do even for asthma patients. Huh? So, I think uh, this comes under that 180. See, doctor, lot of questions do not need preparation. So, do not 
prepare hectically. So, do, does it require any preparation? No preparation at all. Common sense, carry the common sense. Uh, this needs preparation. Labyrinthine artery, pica or ica? You have to be very sure, doctor. <coughs> pica or ica? So, labyrinthine artery, in about 85% of cases, arise from anti inferior cellular artery. 15% of cases from basilar artery. Anybody answered basilar? Ah, you can go and claim. You didn't ask percentages. So, I thought uh, any percentage uh, in that dissection which I have done, my lord, you can go and uh, plead the judge that I have seen from basilar artery it originating 5 years back. The same memory goes with me since it uh, arises in 15% of cases. But doctor, 85 to 100 percent of cases it arises from anterior inferior cerebral artery, which is the answer. Oh, diffuse esophageal spasm, nutcracker esophagus. So, there are a lot of oasis like questions. Examiner do not, I think uh, you might have answered in one hour and came out, I thought. This paper, because uh, our mock test, we will be torturing you by giving the possibly toughest and most idiotic questions. Just to see that you don't cross 120 out of 200. So this paper is suddenly a great relief. You might have thought, Are, how come this week uh, we didn't have um, uh, the teacher well prepared or what uh, kind of a paper. Eh? So corkscrew diffuse aphagial. What is the most frequent congenital laryngeal lesion? Even if you are born blood. Deaf and blind also will answer that it is laryngomalacia. So, be very sure that uh, uh, never in the history this kind of easiest questions will come. Maybe examiner thought this is the last exam. Next comes the NEET. So, let us make everyone happy. But in the process everyone becomes sad. Multiple nasal polypi, cystic fibrosis. Mucoviscidosis, you basically expect it. Ha, this is the tricky question. This will drag the feet. The Lockhart's method of identification is it dactylography or poroscopy? How many of you answered dactylography? Ah, good, correct to certain extent. But if you go through the forensic, suddenly there will be earthquake under the feet. Poroscopy is the further study. MD is given for dactylography, DM is given for poroscopy in forensic medicine. So, poroscopy is further study of fingerprints described by Lockhart. Okay, khatam. Don't feel that I read 15 days forensic medicine. Huh? I attended one full Sunday the forensic uh, discussion. Subject tests also I have taken. All my classmates bunkered posting. I went and participated in that stinking autopsy sessions. Still I did wrong. Yeah, we do wrong. Because that word Lockhart made everything go wrong. So, Lockhart is the one. Further study of the fingerprints where the ridges on the fingers and the hands are studied with microscopic pores is basically the principle laid by the Lockhart. Lockhart's principle of exchange is there, no, that is different. Huh? Now, aha, this is the forensic is really a leg puller this time. Infantile whiplash syndrome. Everybody whiplash means cervical fracture. Chalo, aage bado, aage bado. No, doctor, piche badna padega. What is infantile whiplash syndrome? Caffey has described a syndrome of the child abuse where after shaking the child, there is a subdural hematoma and intraocular bleeding in the battered baby, which is basically called as whiplash syndrome. This is different from that, uh, what is that? Clay Schoveller's fracture, whiplash fracture, all those funda are different. Forensic guys 
neurosurgery very far doctor there will be much simpler things like uh, checking the child finding a hematoma calling it a whiplash uh, injury so there is a reason subdural hematoma is the pathological finding in case of the infantile whiplash syndrome is what we need to basically appreciate doctrine of reciprocal acquittal the fact speaks for itself is basically used in both situation anybody answered contributory negligence huh hai na yeah that is little tempting basically the word contributory negligence is one of the conditions that need to be satisfied before applying reciprocal acquittal that is if the patient is guilty of contributory negligence you can't apply reciprocal acquittal the patient should not be guilty of contributory negligence then reciprocal acquittal can be applied got it doctor but what scenarios exemplify the reciprocal acquittal the fact speaks for itself that includes so there is a tetanus there was no anti tetanus serum was given and house surgeon is reading in the library for entrance and uh, you have applied um uh, you are trying to put an iv line and needle broken and went all the way to right atrium and the patient died so clearly needle is speaking about your mistake so like that the drug overdose transfer steer in the intima of the carotid where do you see this one of the internal findings of a partial hanging so what is meant by partial hanging doctor full hanging is you stand and people hang you the other is you will be leaning against a noose which is being secured where you are not hanging fully there one of the internal findings is in the intima of the carotid arteries there will be transfer splits with the extravasation of the blood as one of the internal autopsy finding is what you have to fundamentally appreciate metal fume fever where do we see zinc copper magnesium nickel mercury lead iron silver chromium lot of things will cause i was checking whether anything else is there in this causes nothing was there only zinc was there so zinc lead to the typical uh, metal fume fever now comes the gynops if you score 30 out of 30 in gynops you can as well give your photograph and leave you are in the top 10 if you score 25 out of 30 in gynops i can say you can expect that you are in top 50 gynops is uh, the typical anthropometric measurement based on which the rank is decided doctor let me tell you it is not medicine don't be apprehended that it is medicine no because gynops is the tailor made like a growth chart you are arrested in the gynops performance means your overall growth epiphyseal fusion everything is poor in entrance so be very sure let us see how well you fed 